Google has just released its newest Pixel phone, and this time around, we've got the Google Pixel 6a. I was able to get hands-on with one of these new budget Android smartphones ahead of its Canadian launch. In this review, I'll take a look at what's new over the previous models, what you can expect if you opt for one of these phones, how some of the features work, and if I think I can recommend it for you. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. Both those things do help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. So what's new with Google Pixel 6a? Google phones follow the same predictable annual update schedule that most smartphones do these days. The previous release was last November's Pixel 6 Pro, and prior to that there was the Pixel 5a, and my last hands-on review with the budget model was the 4a. The 6a uses Google's new Tensor chip, and that's the same chip as in the Pixel 6 Pro, so Google promises it makes the 6a super fast and responsive, and that you can expect apps to launch fast, pages and images to load quickly, and for everything to run smoothly. Tensor also powers advanced features in the phone, like Live Translate, so you can chat in 11 languages in real time. And Live Translate, by the way, is not technically a new feature. This phone is also 5G ready, like all of the newer Pixel phones. In truth, though, it looks like this phone isn't revolutionary or boasting dazzling, never-before-seen features. It's just a newer model. One of the more important features of the A-series phones, though, is that they boast a lot of the features of their big sisters, but without the same big price tag. So what is missing in the Google Pixel 6a? Perhaps it might be easier to talk about what you're not getting with Google's A-series phones. Understandably, when these phones are priced as low as they are, you can't expect them to come with all the bells and whistles of the higher-powered phones. For example, the Pixel 6a here only has the option of 128 gigabytes of storage, while the 6 and 6 Pro have more. The Pixel 6a also has only 6 gigabytes of RAM, which makes it a little less powerful than the 6 or the 6 Pro, which have 8 and 12 gigs respectively. When it comes to the camera, you're getting a slightly less powerful version here too, with the dual rear camera that shoots 12.2 megapixels in wide and 12 in ultra wide, and this ultra wide option is a slight upgrade. The sensor in the camera is also different and not as optimized for low light photos, and it doesn't use lasers to gauge distances. The front facing camera is 8 megapixels, same as the Pixel 6, but the 6 Pro boasts an 11 megapixel front camera by comparison. Returning Google features include the Material U interface, which is really just Google's way of saying you can customize your wallpaper apps and color scheme, but it does take a step further and it links your phone's overall design and interface to whatever you choose as your main screen photo, so there's kind of a nice sense of seamlessness and thoughtful design. Also not in here, but not a must-have feature in my opinion, is wireless Qi charging or wireless fast charging. The Google Pixel 6a boasts some returning photography-based features that are pretty cool. Magic Eraser, which I covered extensively in my review of the Pixel 6 Pro, is back. This feature excels at removing unwanted photo bombers or unattractive distractions from your photos easily. It's kind of like Photoshop, but it's actually integrated into the camera. There's also Face Unblur, which can sharpen blurry portrait photos, though to be honest I haven't had much luck using this feature because Google's camera is actually pretty good at not blurring things in the first place. There's also Real Tone, which Google says is better able to replicate the subtleties of different skin tones better. That is also found in this phone as well. Moving on to battery life and power, Google has obviously listened to complaints from other phone users, so it knows battery is an issue we all like to complain about. It has indeed put a strong focus on long-lasting battery life, as well as options for emergency battery extension. The Pixel 6a, like the Pixel 6 Pro, has what Google somewhat maddeningly refers to as 24-hour battery life. In this iteration, though, they're being a bit more transparent, I think, by sharing that the battery in the new Pixel a is a 4410 milliamp hour battery, which is only slightly less powerful than the batteries found in the 6 and the 6 Pro. The entire lineup boasts that 24-hour battery life, so you're getting the same powerful and long-lasting smartphone as those upgraded models, so a big high-five to Google for that. 
With the adaptive battery option and extreme battery saver, you can even stretch your phone's life to 72 hours in a pinch. You have the ability to choose which apps to keep running and which apps to park or turn off, and that helps prolong the battery life. Again, these are not new features, but they are nice to have on a budget smartphone. There's wired quick charging where a few minutes of juice using the USB-C power cable will earn you a few more hours of use. Also worth mentioning, there's a couple apps I use constantly, including Recorder, which not only makes an audio file of any meetings, phone calls, or interviews, it also creates a very detailed and often freakishly accurate transcript. In my former journalism life, this app alone became a major productivity tool. There's also Wait Time, which will display information about how busy a business is when you want to phone it. And that's another feature that's packed in here. I didn't have the best of luck using that feature in the Pixel 6 Pro since I think businesses in Canada aren't really utilizing it yet. So I will have to dig a bit deeper and try it out again in this version of the phone. Overall, I've only had the Google Pixel 6 a for about a week or so. I'm going to need to spend a little more time with it to really get a feel for things. But my early thoughts are that Google has another great smartphone here. The design, as I've come to expect from Google, is chic and good looking, and this phone easily looks like it could cost twice the price based on aesthetics alone. It is also packed with features, many of which are also found in the much more expensive 6 and 6 Pro phones. When it comes to what is missing, there are naturally features that you're just not going to get in a budget smartphone, but Google has done amazingly well at balancing the must-haves with the would-be-nices. Truthfully, you can live without Qi wireless charging, and the camera here, though technically not as high quality as what's on the 6 and 6 Pro, is still fantastic. If it's time to upgrade your smartphone and you're on a budget, I can absolutely recommend the Google Pixel 6a to you. It sells for about $599 Canadian, which is about $200 less than the Pixel 6, for example, and it is available from Google's website. If you're keen on the phone, why not find out about the Buds? I also reviewed Google's Pixel Buds Pro, and you can click to watch that now. Don't forget to mash that like button and hit me with a sub before you leave.